We're back live in studio with Samuel Azurzer in the business headquarters of Radio Shalom 1650 AM in Montreal with the Money and Business Show. You have questions about your personal finances? You need advice in making sound financial decisions? Samuel and his guests are ready to take your call at 514-738-4100, extension 200. And now back to the Money and Business Show. We're back uh, with uh, Patrick Ohenician, uh, live in Montreal, who owns Bartend.ca. And if you're a student out there, if you have any questions, please give us a call, 514-738-4100. Uh, this is for you. Uh, you're a college grad. You're racking up debt. Hey, why not become uh, a barman or a bartender? There's no shame to that. Uh, if you work for a legit- legitimate you know, restaurant, hotel... Uh, you name it. Uh, if you want to do bar mitzvahs, if you want to do weddings, and so on, you can make a lot of money on this. Why? The tips are very good. And we have here uh, uh, Patrick. Patrick, uh, tell me a little bit something about, you know, I mean, I, it's just a personal question. Um, do, do, do these people cheat, you know, while working? I mean, in, in some ways or what? Yeah, the cheat sheets. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm asking this because, you know, I, 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 I'm sure in this industry, people put money in their pockets. We, we, we just, you know, I, 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 how do you stop that? I mean, you can't. Um, <clears throat> there's, um, there's a lot of funny stories you could hear of uh, b- what bartenders do. I mean, um, some bartenders will, will go out and, and buy their own beer and, and stash their beer behind a bar and sell a case of beer every night. Wow. And uh, it'll take the owner, it could take the owner, like, you know, right away to figure it out, or it could take the owner never to figure it out. Who knows, you know, but uh, some, some bartenders do this. They, they bring their own tequilas, they bring their own spirits, and they'll, uh, they'll keep some of the money. Um, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's a pretty well-known, uh, that's the easiest way to steal, because it's very difficult to ounce-by-ounce ounce monitor um, what the uh, what the bar is using uh, for the for the owner. Okay. Um, and, and what about money? I mean, do they do they do they? Now, stealing money is a little bit more difficult because okay. it's um, you know there's it's a little bit more. Uh, I mean, hopefully they have an accounting system. Okay. But uh, the a liquid like you know to pour to exactly pour one ounce in every drink or you know and to know exactly how many ounces were consumed in one evening. It's pretty difficult unless you have like a computerized system, like an Asbar. Mm-hmm. Uh, even then, it's still it's, you can get around it. Patrick, uh, you know, I, I looked at your at your website. Um, yeah. I think it's bartend.com. Um, it's Bartend a stellar idea. Yeah, uh, CA, but it, 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 w- the stellar idea to develop a unique. Uh, job platform, right? Uh, yeah, we did on um, bartender.com. Sorry, that was com. bartender.com. Yeah, exactly. The bar- I, I found it very unique because, you know, I, I, I looked at it and employers and, and, and employees put their pictures and so on. Um, it was a great way for you to, you know, uh, we'll call it like a, you know, like a meeting place, you know. Where Actually, what it is, yeah? the employers don't uh, put anything up. They don't put their job up. They don't, they, don't, they don't create a profile. The only people that create a profile are the employees. Okay. The employees will create. So, if, for example, if you, Sam, you're, uh, you take our course and now you want to become a bartender. Right. So what do you do? You go to our site. You go to bartender.com and you upload a picture of yourself. Uh, you upload uh, whether or not you're available to work okay. and then your, your contact information and also what your fortes are. If your forte is uh, to work uh, as a bartender or a table, in table service or wine, or you want to become a doorman, or uh, I mean, if you're six foot four and you weigh 200 pounds, then great, you become a doorman. Um, so you 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 know you detail what your forties are, and then the employer uh, to view your profile has to open an account with us, and then they uh, they just scroll, they just do an advanced search. Uh, for example, if they're in the uh, in the downtown. Montreal area, they'll do an advanced search in downtown Montreal, and they'll, uh, if they're looking for uh, a candidate for their, their hotel or their bar, they'll just go and immediately find someone then. So this is not just for, uh, uh, Patrick, this is not just for uh, a bartender or barman. We're, we're looking also as a waiter, waitress, right? Yeah, uh, well, it can be a maitre d', okay. uh, it could be for a hostess, it can be for a, a table service, it can be, like I said, like a bouncer. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of, you know... Bars and these bouncers. And it's it's and a job a plat. Of, uh, it's a job platform that you created, right? It's. Uh, yeah, I uh, thought of this because. Yeah, it's I, bartend.com, right? Uh, I leave the. Uh, sometimes I leave the school. Like we have okay. evening classes, and the classes would finish at nine thirty, and I, you know, leave this class the, the the school at around ten o'clock, and I'd be walking home with my friends, and then uh, some bar owner 
on Sherbrooke Street or whatever would stop me and pat me on the shoulder and say, Patrick, Patrick, please do me a favor. Could you go back to your school and could you get me a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of names for some, uh, some bartenders? I'm short of a bartender tonight. It's like an emergency. Can you please go back? And it's like I'm really stuck. And then I would, like, run back to the school and get them some names and go back. And I said, well, why am I doing all this? Why don't we just have a, a database of, of, of candidates, from graduates from our school, so that we can... Uh, provide this uh, service for the, uh, for the employers. Well, what is your one of the most memorable uh, story, you know, working behind the bar, obviously? It could oh, be I in a hotel. A could no, be let's a... get to that later on, okay? What? Um, oh, you mean later on the show? or? <laughs> yeah, later on in the show, because um, yeah. that's, that's, I have some really funny stories. Okay, uh, I'll leave that to uh, later yeah. on the show. Um, okay, I, I know you a little bit better now, and uh, some of the most memorable story, obviously, we're going to be looking at, um, obviously, a little bit later on uh, into the show. But tell tell us more uh, about the process when someone calls in. Uh, what happens to the process? What do they do? They they call in and say, okay, you know what? I want to learn a little bit more. So just take through the process from A to Z. What happens when they go to your school? Well, most, most of the people that call us, they already know that they want to register. They already feel like, uh, hey, you know, it's not a really big investment. Think about it. It's only like, you know, if, it's a, if they're taking a 30-hour course and it's uh, $398, that's like, uh, what is it, $12 an hour? Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. Okay. So, and they can pay it in installments. They don't have to pay it all up front. So most of them... It doesn't take any convincing. They just like they, they know they want to work in the hospitality industry. They've either, uh, you know, they've already made up their mind. So it's just a question of them asking us, what's the or or, uh, fi- or, or fine tuning classes beginning. What are the availabilities? Uh, what uh, what are the payment schedules? Uh, you know, where are the, where's the school located? How do I get there? Uh, when are you open? Uh, you know, things like that. And then you know, they just most of them don't even call us. They just register directly online and show up for the class. Uh, may I ask you how much the uh, your school costs? Is, is if somebody wants to be, a, let's say, a waiter or waitress, and and they want a job in, in a hotel, um, can you tell us some of the you know pricing, just roughly, think, you know, just we, roughly? Uh, we have a thirty-hour uh, bartending course, which is like a, we call it a level one and level two, which is uh, basically all the exotic drinks, the cafe flambés, the shooters, the basic drinks you know, like the Tom Collins, the basic drinks that are, you know, the direct drinks, and then the exotic drinks are more the shaken drinks and the stirred drinks. And, um, you know, the drinks that are, you know, they're, they're, they're fancy drinks, but they're still asked by clients. And then there's uh, the, all the shooters, um, you know, the proper way of opening the, the wines and all that. And that, co- that course, at level one, level two, is uh, $398. And we do have uh, discounts if you're unemployed, if you're a student, uh, or if you bring a friend. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, discounts, okay. but uh, basically the course is 398 uh, obviously plus tax. And uh, the table service course, which is a 10-hour course, um, is, uh, you know, to serve food uh, properly in a restaurant. Uh, that course is, you know, it's a brief of a course. You need to practice, but it's, it's 10 hours and it's $198. Okay. So that's uh, like, you know, it's, that's $19, $20 an hour. What, what about flaring? I mean, this is, you know, I went down to uh, a Vegas a, a while back, and I couldn't believe how, you know, I, I, I'm behind, I, you know, I order a drink and so on, and you know, he's throwing bottles and all that. Could you explain what a flaring is all about? Yeah, flaring is very popular. I guess it, you know, it became popular in the United States. Okay. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's to entertain the, you're not going to have uh, people, bartenders, flare in a private club. They're going to flare in a, in a nightclub. So, they're just basically, uh, while they're preparing the drink, they're, uh, they're taking the spirit bottle and they're, uh, you know, spitting, in, spitting it and catching it and pouring at the same time with the other hand. There's a lot of different uh, flare techniques that, you know, it's exciting to watch. Um, it's not a big part of our business. It's a, it's a, it's a very uh, progressive thing. You know, we, we really try to teach you the... the the, the foundation so that really you can go to your job and you can be confident and you'll get yourself a job. That's basically we, we, what we want. We want to have the reputation. We want to be happy uh, with our clients uh, working. That's really what we're looking for. 
Great. Uh, Patrick, just uh, again, if someone is, is a student and says, you know, maybe, maybe not, I don't know if this waitering is my type, I uh, maybe a little bit insecure, maybe I'm not as good looking, whatever, what do you say to them? I mean, what, what do you say to them? No. I mean, it, it depends who's going to hire you. You don't have to be, you know, the most beautiful person. Oh, yeah, you don't have to be a knockout to work as a bartender. Right. You have to be good. And you you know have what? to be good. You got to know Let how me to tell make you something else. Right. Look, you got to think of it this way. Right. If you're. You know, some people say, oh, well, i got to be a girl, I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a guy, I'm never going to get a job. That's not really true, because if you're a really hot girl and you're working in a bar, what's going to happen? You're going to have all the guys at your bar, right? The girl's mm-hmm. going to walk in, there's going to be, there's gonna be uh, you know, 30 guys around the bar, right? Because there's a really hot girl working there. So the girls are going to be happy. Okay. But what if a guy comes into your bar, right, and he sees 30 guys around the bar because there's a hot girl there? The guy's going to say, what am I doing in this place? They're not going to stay there, right? They're not going to be happy. So a hot girl working as a bartender is not always the ideal thing. And a hot, and a hot guy is even better because you've got a, hot, you know, you've got a, a nice guy that's personable, that's, that's, that's keeping girls as, as clients, is the ideal, ideal bartender because then guys walk into your bar and they're like, wow, you know, there's, there's pretty girls here and I'm going to stay here. I like this place. Good. Okay. So yeah. it's really like, you know, it's, you know, you want to... And, and, uh, and if you're in a private club... Or if you're in a hotel, they don't really, you know, they're not looking for, uh, it's not a nightclub. I mean, it's, they want someone that's serious, that's able to keep a conversation, that's able to, the most important is to maintain their clients. You know, they don't want, most of the clients that are in a private club or in a, or in a hotel, they're recurring clients. So they don't want. So uh, I, I, I want to ask you, in, in this industry, let's say the hospitality industry, what, what's the average uh, t- it, it tip? Uh, we're looking at still at uh, anywhere from 10 to 15% or there's a set amount out there? Tip? Yes, tips. Um, usually, I don't think people tip on a... Uh, I, I personally don't tip on a percentage. Like if I go to a, if I go to a, uh, a club and I order a drink, I'm going to leave a, a minimum of a dollar, a, dollar, a dollar tip. So if the drink costs me... Uh, Fifteen dollars. I'm gonna live a dollar, two dollars. You know, so it's not really a percentage. You know, you use that too, right? If someone leaves you a beer, you're not gonna. Leave, you're buying a four dollar beer. You're not gonna leave the guy a quarter. You're gonna leave him a dollar, aren't you? If the if the if the beer is four dollars, you're gonna leave him a five dollar tip, a five dollar bill. You're not gonna take back. You're not gonna ask the guy, "Hey, can I get some change, please?" So there's there's no shame of leaving a dollar or something. Because most people say, you know what, I have to calculate exactly, you know, fifteen uh, percent. Or but there's no, really no. there's no people really. Okay. A, you know, they usually leave a no, dollar. No, I, I just wanted drink. to know that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's about a dollar per drink. Okay, a dollar. That's, per a, that's what I, I I leave sometimes two dollars a drink. It depends how how happy I am and how happy the the bartender. Uh, or or how they served it, right? Uh, yes, and so yes, on. Good, good. Patrick, just stay on the line. We're going through another commercial again. We have Patrick Ohanisian uh, live uh, in Montreal, who owns Bartend.ca again. My my name is Samuel Azurza for the Money and Bishop Radio Show, CJR 1650 AM Montreal. We'll be right back in two minutes.